Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and I join you on this Tuesday evening for another reading from the Bite from the Good Book. And so, let me just uh, familiarise myself one second, and we shall begin. A reading from the Book of Numbers. When the Canaanite king of Arad, who lived in the uh, Negeb, heard that the Israelites were coming along the way of Arpharim, he engaged them in battle and took some of them captive. Israel then made this vow to the Lord. If you deliver this people into my hand, I will doom their cities. Later, when the Lord heeded Israel's prayer and delivered up uh, the Canaanites, they doomed them and their cities. Hence the place was named Hormah. From Mount Hor, they set out on the Red Sea Road to bypass the land of Edom. But with their patience worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this desert, where there is no food on, on, or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord sent among the people serpa, serpents, which bit the people so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned in complaining against the Lord and mote you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a serpent and mount it on a pole, and if anyone who has been bitten looks at it, he will recover. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole, and whenever anyone who had been bitten by a serpent looked at the bronze serpent, he recovered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the book of John. Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, You testify on your own behalf, so your testimony cannot be verified. Jesus answered them and said to them, even if I do testify on my own behalf, my testimony can be verified, because I know where I come from and know where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge by appearances, but I do not judge anyone. And even if I should judge, my judgment is valid, because I am not alone. But it is I and the Father who sent me. Even in your law, it is written that the testimony of two men can be verified. I testify on my behalf, and so does the Father who sent me. So they said to him, Where is your Father? Jesus answered, You know ne neither me nor my Father. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the treasury in the temple area. But no one arrested him, because his hour had not yet come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When we look up to people, ladies and gentlemen, we see certain very different and very special qualities. This, of course, depending on whoever you ask, and whoever your preferences for an idol turn out to be. For many people, they look towards people for the, uh, a great source of inspiration for their success. I know there are a great many people who looked up to Elon Musk because of his principles for running a business and his principles on influencing people to become rich in themselves so that they may also contribute back to the world in the same way that he has done through his business practices. Some also look up to uh, such men like uh, Satoshi, uh, ta ka ka uh, uh, Satoshi, I'll have to uh, look this up, I apologise ladies and gentlemen, I just do not technically want to get this incorrect. Uh, yes, uh, Satoshi Tajiri, the uh, creator of the Pokemon franchise. Many people look up to him, not only as a uh, great and a groundbreaking uh, video game uh, uh, engine programmer, but they look to him as also the source for many people's childhoods. A sense of nostalgia, adventure, wonderment, engagement, 
and be creating beautiful worlds, engaging worlds, that not only reflected Satoshi's uh, childhood fantasies and wonder, but also invoked the imaginations of many of us now living today. And especially if you were indeed somebody who was f fascinated with Pokemon many, many years ago. Even, even to this day, in fact. <laughs> many people also look up to politicians for their very casual and very steady fast uh, approach to work, their policies, and frequently what they stand up for as being parallel to our own beliefs. How many of us could honestly say right now that they look up to the saints and Jesus Christ as idols? How many of us can honestly say that through Jesus' ex example, he is not only the best candidate for the most inspirational idol any of us could look forward to watching, but that his messages never fail to amaze us. When we think about it, ladies and gentlemen, he is the light of the world. He is the man who will shine the way for all of us. Because Jesus has time for all of us. We are all sons of men, so therefore our stance is valid in all circumstances. Even in perhaps our most petty of instances, we are still valid in the eyes of the Lord. Because even if such instances are petty and they do not interfere most people, they do interfere some people. I've seen this enough myself and I cannot uh, be angry with those who are perhaps irritated by things that would otherwise be seen as petty and nonchalant. It is simply my case not to judge those and that I hope that they will be seen to as someone who can be helped with with their certain dilemma. But when you think about it, ladies and gentlemen, it is not just about those who can help others. Doctors, paramedics, nurses, all of them fall into the lines of idol that we look up to because they do such wonderful and interesting things. So I ask this question, ladies and gentlemen, not just about uh, the fact that we could also compare, G we could throw uh, Jesus as being the very head of, uh, of what should be a list of very respectable idols as being the light of the world. But what about us, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, I'm going to make this next part all about us. You, you there, living at home, or sitting on a bus, or whatever it may be you know, you're doing right now. This part is directly for all of you. What about you, Zot? Do you consider yourselves idols? Do you perhaps consider that people look up to you as a source of support and those who perhaps have plenty to say and their opinions are well and truly valid based on steadiness of character, wisdom, skill, whatever the case might be? Now, you may not think about this too much, ladies and gentlemen, but when you really come to think about it, how much do people really depend and rely on our skills and resources? A lot more than you might think. Because certainly in the times of Jesus, there were many people who looked up and were even following Jesus who did such very respectable works and were led to be Jesus' example. This, of course, is referring to the apostles. I believe it was uh, the sons of Zebedee and the likes of James and John who were fishermen when they started uh, their lives and then they were sentenced to become fishers of men. And when you think about it like that, ladies and gentlemen, how many of us living ordinary lives, as it were, this, of course, the, your definition of ordinary is always going to be very, very different and rather specific based on person to person. But surely, ladies and gentlemen, can we not consider ourselves uh, workers or idols of God no matter what we do or where we go in our lives? This all obviously depends on what we do with the talents we are given. For those who do remember the story of uh, the farmer who gave his servants some talents, what exactly are we supposed to do with them? What exactly are we supposed to do with our time here on earth? Do we invest? Do we do what we can? Or do we simply stick our head in the sand and do nothing until our time has come? But if we stuck our head in the sand for too long, ladies and gentlemen, we might find that the whole world has disappeared before us 
and there is nothing for us and all we have is all we will ever have. This point is insi worth insisting upon ladies and gentlemen because time on this earth is very short. Our lives will fly by far faster than any of us could possibly ever predict. Whether some of us live for the next 10 years or perhaps the next 84 years, we have to make the time on this earth count because one day people will talk about us again, not just on this earth, but in the next world. And what do you suppose people like them will be saying about us when our time comes? How important do you think it will be, ladies and gentlemen, to be remembered as someone who set the most perfect example, somebody who was very gracious in our manner, somebody who had time for other people, for criminals, for the low caste, the outcasts of society, somebody who was willing to heal the sick, the wicked, the wounded and the lame, somebody who was willing to show people the error of their ways, somebody who was willing to forgive and sacrifice for our benefit. Does that sound familiar to you? Familiar anybody? Well, if you, if you understood uh, the point I was uh, getting across, I think I may as well end this video by saying that no matter who you are, no matter where you are going, and no matter where we will all end up, we all need people to look up to, as well as that serpent that Moses carried on his staff. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.